Hello and welcome into another episode, the latest episode of We Are Soccer Central. How's it going? My name's Robert Kerr here with you, hosting the program once again. Uh, the program that connects uh, the world's game to the game being played right here in the United States. Hope you guys had a great St. Patrick's Day weekend. Big football weekend locally and globally. Uh, <laughs> FA Cup action was wild on the other side of the sea. And here closer to home, uh, Detroit City FC kicked off their uh, season on the road in Colorado with a late, late winner with local hero Connor Rutz scoring the winning goal from his backside. Also, MLS action, uh, Kellen Acosta scored one of, <laughs> I'm hearing fluky. I uh, just kind of uh, raised an eyebrow, but uh, check out Kellen Acosta's goal for the Chicago Fire over the weekend. Our friends Craig Hearn uh, interviewed Kellen Acosta and the goalie, Mr. Chris Brady. Some sort of a Craig Hearn connection there on uh, that wild goal over the weekend. But... I would be remiss to not say happy Open Cup week. The uh, the big round, round one of the U.S. Open Cup kicks off this week. On the 19th, Miami and Chattanooga kick off a stacked calendar the next three days, the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st, with a myriad of Open Cup games, so be to sure to check out our friends at thecup.us. They've got full and complete coverage over there. For previous episodes, check out We Are Soccer on YouTube and online. Last week's episode with Seattle Times sports writer Jada Evans had lots of great nuggets in there, and the news continues. We touched on it a little bit in that conversation about the Seattle rain but uh, news of the sale of the Seattle Rain uh, coming through today. So uh, ongoing story there. But uh, Seattle, such an active soccer scene. It was great to talk to Jada about uh, all the happenings in the Pacific Northwest and our Michigan uh, bass player, Miss Bethany Balser. But this week on the podcast or on the program uh we talk about midwest premier league a grassroots summer uh semi-pro amateur uh uh league that was founded and is run by its members clubs so uh this is year four and i thought it would be good time to welcome in the commissioner of the league mr uh Mr. Pat Hodgins. <laughs> yeah, we got commissioner of the Midwest Premier League to uh, talk about the exciting stuff going on. Promotion relegation, two divisions in Michigan, and some uh, hyper-local and very creative teams. So uh, I always like talking Midwest Premier League. A great platform for uh, amateur teams to really develop their own identity and to uh, give players a great place to perform. So check it out. My interview with Pat Hodgins. Midwest Premier League Commissioner here on We Are Soccer Central. Welcome back into We Are Soccer Central. I'm very excited for our next topic and our next guest. The Midwest Premier League is heading into its fourth year. The club-run summer amateur league uh, has set itself apart from the others that run in the same part of the calendar being created and led by its clubs. And I'm joined now to talk a little bit about what year four brings to the Midwest Premier League. I'm now joined by league commissioner, Pat Hodgins. Welcome to We Are Soccer Central, sir. Hey, thank you so much for having me, Robert. So it's year four for the league, year two for you. Um, just for the folks that are listening who don't know the summer amateur season and Midwest Premier League, uh, kind of what's the premise behind the league you run? Sure. So we're a semi-professional amateur league that runs mainly like May 1 through like the first week of August. Um, you know, most of the teams are pretty heavy on the college players. So as the college season starts to ramp up in late July, early August, a lot of players start heading home. So 
you know, we're filling a good void for those kids and for the soccer market uh, between, you know, May and May and August. So the Midwest Premier League consists of four divisions and 37 teams. So um, that's pretty exciting, giving a lot of amateur teams a platform to kind of uh, be free to be themselves. Um, uh, it was started by uh, the clubs, obviously. And uh, what was the process of uh, you becoming the commissioner? Yeah, so I joined the Midwest Premier League um, last year. It was my first full year as commissioner. Um, I, my background is in youth soccer. Um, I work full time for a state association. And then I've been involved with Bavarians um, as their coach uh, from 2012 up until 2023. Um, so I was transitioning out of uh, coaching men's uh, soccer and, you know, looked at the Midwest Premier League as a good way to stay involved with the adult space and um, and help uh the clubs and grow the league a little bit so i've been fortunate enough to uh attend uh the majority of the uh, like the winter meetings for the league and get to hear um some of the new in initiatives it seems year on year trying to uh improve quality and add another element to the league uh, kind of what is new to the midwest premier league in 2024 well the big one that i think has made most of the headlines for the league this off season is that we're going like promotion relegation uh, for the Heartland Conference or the Heart Heartland Division, um, which is mainly like Illinois, Wisconsin uh, teams. So that was our big initiative. Uh, the clubs really were driving that to get us into two tiers. So we'll have a, a tier one that'll have six teams and a tier two that'll have seven teams. Um, you know, going through the process of finalizing how teams will move up, you know, how many teams are going to move up, how many teams are going to move down um, as we head into the start of the season. But for us, that was a really big uh, initiative. Um, I know other leagues have really talked about the concept of uh, pro rel, and we were really fortunate that our clubs in the heartland were supportive of it. And um, we got that initiative off the ground. Um, some other things we're really working on is working with our clubs to making sure that their games are streaming and um, accessible for the public. Uh, for you know, we always want people to go attend the games in person and to be able to you know create a good atmosphere at games. But we want those to be available, um, on, you know, through a streaming service so people can can watch those games. And then we're really trying to you know focus on the marketing of our league. Uh, you know, and our players and our clubs, because we do have really good clubs. We have really good players and uh, they all have stories that uh, need to be told. Yeah, lots of hyper regional and uh, self-expressive uh, clubs. Uh, you mentioned the promotion relegation in the Heartland Division. Uh, clubs like Roscoe, Berber City, uh, Edgewater, uh, Green Bay, Glory, Rockford and uh strikers fox valley so so some pretty specific uh areas there that they're represent, representing and then the first division is uh the club that you said you spent a long time with bavarian uh chicago house um decalb adria steel city and another one from chicago that i'm not familiar with uh zarni yaslo so there is for, correct me if i if i said that correct no that, that's correct that's correct oh so, Swinging a hit. That's yeah. good. And so that that's just one of the divisions. So that is largely uh, Chicagoland up into uh, Wisconsin and then uh, out uh, into the more uh, rural regions of Illinois. But there's also uh, two divisions in uh, Michigan and then also the Gateway Conference. I know that was uh, when I was at the... Uh, all general meeting two years ago, that, that was something that was definitely in its infancy. It, it's got eight teams now in 2024. Uh, is, is that uh, getting on stronger footing? Yes, it, it is. Um, we have four teams that are kind of based in like the St. Louis uh, metro area. I think Jun Junction is technically in like the Springfield, Bloomington, Illinois area. Um, so we have four clubs that are kind of make up more of like a St. Louis market and then four that are in Iowa. And, you know, because we want to limit the amount of travel 
they'll play each other twice, kind of home and away, and then they'll play everybody from the other group. Um, you know, two teams home, two teams away to, within that conference, which we thought worked out pretty well for everybody to limit some of the travel because in that market, you know, you, you could be looking at four or five, six hour trips and we're really trying to avoid that. Um, but yeah, the, the gateway is on much better footing now than it, than it was this time last year. And it's great to see what's going on in Michigan. You know, like you said, 10 teams in the Great Lakes East, uh, six teams in the West. Um, we picked up, you know, uh, another Indiana team this year. So we're super excited about that. And just to try to continue, you know, in some of those markets as we grow for 2025. Um, for what I'm I'm picking up here is uh, the Midwest Premier League is giving a, a platform to some teams to express themselves because some of the badges and the uh, the branding is very unique, not something you necessarily see in the uh, – American professional ranks. Yeah, yeah, we don't have any uh, requirements, or uh, you know, we're not going to tell our our, our clubs um, what their logos can and can't look like, as long as they're not being you know vulgar or discriminatory towards other groups. Yeah, I see uh, some really good ones and some new ones too. But also, you you noted uh, some of the uh, one of the big things is limiting travel. You know, from an amateur's perspective or a a uh, grassroots perspective travel can really uh to drain the tank so that seems like it's really been a focus right of the of the league yeah i mean Being absolutely. Sensitive to that. i mean absolutely one of the things we're really built on is you know sustainability for our clubs you know trying to make sure that they can come back year after year and, and have a platform to participate in and, and one of those things is keeping their costs low um we feel like we're a very affordable league and, you know, one of the other ways we can keep costs low is keeping their travel costs down. Um, it starts getting expensive when you need to get buses or, you know, reimburse players for, you know, gas and, and buy meals and stuff for your players. So trying to keep those, uh, you know, games within a certain time dis uh, travel distance is really important to us. And we, we also think it's important that, you know, your fans can, can get to your games. Um, like you said, within Chicago, those markets are really close. You can pick up and you can go to the game, no, no problem. When you're talking four or five hours, you know, to go to uh, watch your team, uh, that might, you know, sway some people not to attend some of those away games and kind of uh, takes away from the environment. Yeah, having a, that's kind of just like a natural part of uh, an atmosphere in soccer is having the, the back and forth between home and away. And that's something that, uh, you know, we're edging towards here in this country. You know, every now and again, you get to a game where you get to have a nice uh, uh, crowd on each side. So um, uh, there's a Chicago-based uh, or, or the, the Heartland-based, based, the uh, the Pro-Rel in the Heartland, the two divisions in in Michigan. Um, so each, each uh, conference kind of has its own little quirk to it, which, which makes it fun. Um, so I understand there's a championship game for the two divisions that battle each other in the Great Lakes, correct? That is correct. Um, we started that last year where the winner of the East uh, played the winner of the West in that Great Lakes um, championship game. Um, and that was Inter Detroit in 1927 SC out of Fort Wayne. So we're going to continue with that uh, tradition this year. So it'll also be a representative from the West will be playing a representative from the East uh, in, in that championship game. Uh, I think it's scheduled for July 27th. Um, will kind of like be the, the last game of the season for those conferences. And then another uh, detail of the competition for another conference in the Heartland, the one where you're introducing a promotion relegation, what are the stakes on the table for going up or down? Um, so we're trying to finalize the exact number of teams and how that process is, is going to work. Um, you know, if whether it's one team is going to go down and two teams are going to come up from uh, tier two into tier one for 2025, um, our, our board is finalizing what that looks like right now. Um, we should have something announced publicly here in the next couple of weeks. But we're uh, just trying to get those those details squared away with with the teams. 
What's been your uh, favorite thing or favorite memory uh, or moment uh, being involved with Midwest Premier League? Oh, I mean, I really enjoy our AGMs. Um, and like I know you mentioned that you've uh, been fortunate to attend them. I really just enjoy all the clubs coming together, hearing their stories, seeing the differences, but also realizing how similar we all are Like in, in the end, whether it's you know clubs like Bavarians that have been around for almost 100 years or, or you got clubs like Lansing that are you know just getting off the ground, um, you know the, the struggles that everybody faces and you know that everyone's really just trying to you know do something positive within their community and really give individuals the opportunity to continue to play soccer um, in a in a very organized you know professional in an organized professional way. So uh, fast forward, we put our time traveling hats on here. It's the end of August. Uh, what's a successful season uh, for the commission? Yeah, um, the you know the the easy low hanging fruits is you know uh, no significant incidents, uh, you know within the league. You know everybody gets to the opportunity to play all their games. You know all of our clubs make it through the season um, is the very you know easy obvious ones. Um, you know, but for me, you know, if we can tell a good story of some of our clubs and and, and push the league forward. Uh, you know, whether it be on social media or just try to grow um, our reach a little bit into some into some new markets and maybe draw the attention of some existing clubs uh, as we look forward to 2025, I, I think would be a really good a place for us to end. If someone's hearing this for the first time, uh, they look up Midwest Premier League uh, or MidwestPL.com and they see that there's a team near them, like what's... What's a way for them to get involved? Yeah, I mean, I would, you know, like you said, reference them to the website, you know, reach out to the clubs in their area. A lot of our clubs, you know, are very volunteer based. You know, they're always looking for more individuals to help them out, whether it's with, with game day stuff, social media stuff, um, you know, just getting more knowledge about their club into the community. Um, so most clubs, I would imagine, would be pretty accepting to those that are looking to help. Um, so, you know, find a club in your area and at the most basic point, you know, get out to a game, uh, support them, support the players on the field, and you will not be disappointed by, by the product that you see on the field. Well, Pat, thank you so much for uh spending some time with us and uh, talking about the Midwest Premier League. Was there any parts of the league or anything new that we didn't cover here just now? Um, no, I mean, I would really just like to note that Chicago House on Wednesday, um, you know, what Peter Wilt and Brian, what Brian and Matt Poland and those guys have done, you know, to qualify for the Open Cup now, you know, two years in a row. Um, Wednesday, they host uh, Minnesota United too. So I believe all of those games are, will be streamed. And, uh, you know, if people can tune in um, and, and watch a Midwest Premier League team play, um, you know, I think they're a good representative of our league and what we're all about. So I, I would be remiss if I, if I didn't mention those guys and the job that they're doing and uh, their team participation in, in the Open Cup. Chicago House taking on Minnesota United 2 on Wednesday. And then uh, Midwest Premier League giving uh, Midwest-based amateur teams a platform to uh, grow and, uh, you know, dig some roots in. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Pat Hodgins, for uh, joining us here on uh, We Are Soccer Central, sir. Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate the time. Big, big thanks to Midwest Premier League Commissioner Pat Hodgins for breaking it down and kind of getting me excited about uh, the summer, summer amateur season. Promotion, relegation, who would have thunk it? 37 teams from across the Midwest getting an opportunity to play in a uh, sustainable and stable league. 
with a uh, low overhead cost. So not, what's not to enjoy there for uh, summer soccer lovers. Thank you listeners for uh, tuning in once again. Got to give a shout out to Ryan, the uh, every week listener I got to have uh, a chat with at St. Patrick's Day party. So that was excellent. Cheers for listening, Ryan. If you are once again, hopefully after our conversation, you still want to tune in. And um, thank you to the uh, Michigan Soccer Central crew. We are soccer crew and all the soccer lovers out there. We got lots of great content coming up on the channel and on this program in particular. So keep it locked in. And until next time, everybody, please enjoy your soccer.